Let me do the first verse by myself. Do you have it? Yeah, man. Because I'm feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Then we can, you know, then we can edit y'all out <laughs> on the rest and it'll be fine. Are you ready? <laughs> self editing will be a blank tape. That's self editing. Self -editing. Self -editing. <laughs> okay, Bert. I'm sorry. We love you, man. I know, I know. Mm -hmm. What's that last track? We, we love you, Andrew. We were all out. Yeah. Okay, hush up. We're rolling tight. I'm trying to think. Uh, it was on TV. It was American Bandstand. I think you said Bill Haley. Yeah, it was Bill Haley on American Bandstand. Mm. That, kid, that guy did that solo that sounded like a bazillion notes. Diddle, 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 diddle. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was. And mm -hmm. I couldn't, but there was this energy that they had, and it, boy, it was like, wow. Yeah, my parents were into swing, you know, and uh, they were, you know, like, they were like jazz people. Mm -hmm. And they like uh, my dad kind of liked uh, uh, Jordan. What's his name? Jordan. Uh, What's the guy's Louis name? Jordan. Louis Jordan. Oh, oh. yeah, Tiffany. Fox. And so it kind of reminded me of Louis Jordan and all that. And then the next time I I watched uh, American Bandstand, it was uh, um, the killer uh, Jerry, Jerry Lee. Jerry Lee. Lee. And he scared the crap out of me. Man. <laughs> right. It was like really menacing. It was like oh, I was really I was a little kid. I was like that's kind of scary. I don't know about that. Got a little filling station out on the old highway. Uh, a cousin, a cousin, uh, Chip Allen, who played with CL in the pictures. Anybody, I don't know if anybody ever remembers him from Houston mm -hmm. back in the 50s. Yeah, he had a Stratocaster, Fender Stratocaster, and a, a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I went, shit, that's for me, man. <laughs> that's a lot for me right there. <laughs> Had patent leather pompadour haircut, black patent leather, you know. So uh, that was it. That was, that's, you know, and then as far as listening to people, God, I don't know. It would have probably been, it's probably embarrassing, but uh, probably Jimmy Reed and, uh, uh, well, my first two records I had was Mance Slipkin and Lightning Hopkins. Wow. So I heard, you know, that was the only two albums I had. Mm. Oh, and I had uh, "If It Don't Work Out" by the Rhapsodies on a forty-five, and uh, <laughs> but it was that was real. That was uptown. That man. was real sweet, yeah. But I'd say Jimmy Reed. Paul, when did you first notice guitar? <laughs> Earlier today. <laughs> Your first gig? He said, what the fuck is so loud there? <laughs> let's talk about the drums. <laughs> oh, no, let's not talk. Oh, hey, Glenn? <laughs> <laughs> now, I have to admit, Next. you know, my older sister was uh, into rock and roll, and uh, her 45 she would spin, and of course it was Elvis and everything, but I think for me, when I first really locked into the guitar, was the Ventures. Oh, I mean... Yeah. That sound, that you know, that reverb and whatever you know, and yeah. just the the girl in the bikini on the album, and I don't know. You know. So it was a girl first, and then yeah. <laughs> I think the Ventures, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. The that, was, that was another question. Was it was anything besides women that made you play guitar? Hmm. Was, probably no. Okay. <laughs> Ukulele. Yeah. When oh. I was 11. Mm -hmm. And then it got a guitar. Were you living in makes... Hawaii then? Hawaii, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know Jake then? Oh, yeah. Jake. <laughs> that sweet guy. guy. Sweet guy. Yeah. 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 But this is about guitar, so let's pass it on to Alan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, tell us about bass guitar. When did you, yeah. No, when did you, when yeah, did you, you know, when anybody did you can play over? a bass. Come on. That's not so. It's only four strings. Yeah. <laughs> and you only need two of them. <laughs> 
We can all name bass players who can't play them four strings. I know Let's a number of <laughs> lead bass players. You can, I can get you guys if y'all want a lead, good lead bass man. <laughs> Let's not call him. <laughs> <laughs> I had the same Lightning Hopkins, Jimmy Reed stuff, kind of the first in Houston. And then when I was 10 years old, uh, older sister Roy Head mm -hmm. and the Traits lived in our apartments and they rehearsed in the in the pool room. Mm -hmm. So I got to sit there and watch them, uh, you know, vintage wow. strats doing to da, da, Was da, Jimmy Dodd playing for him? Well, whoever the original guys were in 66 wow. and they were on Larry Kane's show. And Treat my sister. Right. Uh, Jimmy Dodd Smith? Yeah. And my mm -hmm. sister. Uh, had like one of those little white fringe dresses on the Larry Kane show. You know? Oh my God. So we sit at the pool watching and I was already playing and was nice. pretty good by the time I was 11 or 12. I could play and sing songs, and, you know, with Bob Dylan to Jimmy Reed. Wow. The stuff that I played on the radio, but the, the B.J. Thomas would hang out and Roy Head and those guys were pretty BJ cool. B.J. had the triumphs yeah. then. Wow. Yeah, and then of course, you know, Houston radio, man, you didn't realize you're hearing uh, Jimmy Reed and Bobby Bland and all these guys all the time. I just thought that was regular radio. And Houston had some Killer music to grow up in. Very fortunate mm -hmm. to be around that. And uh, then that's where first 40 years ago, see this guy playing with Ike Sweat and Joey mm -hmm. Long. and mm -hmm. who You could go see Joey Long in a small club and be oh, Dr. Man. John, Johnny Winter, Billy Gibbons, any number of Roy Head, anybody just sitting in an audience, yeah. you know, and Freddie Fender. And so it was... When I, for 17, 18 years old, sitting around these, you could drink, <laughs> smoke, you know, hey, this is pretty cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, once I could make $30 a night playing, I, you know, give up the broom, y'all can have the sweet job, you know, you're working all day long making, you know, $100 a week. All of a sudden, you can play three nights a week and make 90 bucks. Hey, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. I'm in. Was it? You know, I think I actually I had a, I had a friend whose brother had the uh, the Ventures. Uh, I used to look at that record label. It said "Walk, Don't Run," and I was just and I could hear the song. That was I was like, "Wow, that's that's guitar." Yeah. And uh, I still don't know that song, but um, <laughs> I think in in Dallas there was um, I don't know if they got those shows in Houston too, like Panther Hall of Go Go and all these guys. Mm -hmm. And the the guy like on the Porter Wagner show, they'd have all these. I wasn't playing guitar, but they'd have all these incredible guitar players that would just rip Smoke off that, this unbelievable country players. Which one shows. of those shows from Dallas was Gatemouth, the house guitar player? The on? Beat. The and Beat. I, the and beat. I actually <laughs> saw that came on uh, 11.30 Saturday night. Wow. And um, I didn't really understand what it was, but I saw Freddie King on there. I did too. Those were great videos. Yeah, yeah. With, with Louis Jordan? Well, I, don't, I wouldn't, at the time, I was, you know, I don't know what year it would have been. Late junior high or Middle high. Middle high. Oh, Brian. <laughs> I don't look thin. Yeah, Watch, my neck doesn't go left. That's a piece of resistance, isn't it? Yeah, baby. That was that was a piece of resistance.